In the last video, we worked out how to differentiate trigonometric functions by inspecting the graphs of those functions. In this video, we are going to look at how to apply what we've learnt to physical situations. Here I've listed what we discovered in the last video, how to differentiate those trigonometric functions. And below that, I've written two equations. The one on the bottom left is faraday lenz's law which allows you to calculate the EMF at a given time by differentiating the flux linkage as a function of time with respect to time. And the equation at the bottom on the right is the definition of simple harmonic motion. Now I've recorded a whole video already where I derive that equation on the bottom right. And you can find that linked in the description below. Both of these examples need us to use something called the chain rule. And I'm going to start with the example that's written here, the Faraday Lenz's law example. The chain rule looks a little bit like this. So dx by dt is the same as dx by dz times dz by dt. And you can see that's straightforward because the dz's would cancel. So when would you use it? Well, you'll use it when you have a function of a function. Sometimes a function of a function is called a functional. So a functional, where functional is a noun. Now in this example, the EMF here is the first derivative, or minus the first derivative of the flux linkage. And the flux linkage is a function of time. Now a common situation is for that flux linkage to be proportional to the cosine of the angular displacement of a coil relative to some magnetic flux density. So in this equation here, n is the number of turns on a coil. In the simplest case, that can be one. B is the flux density, which is in simple terms, how strong a magnet is, but it has a direction, it's a vector. And A is the area of the coil. And again, that is actually a vector. We don't need to get bogged down with that in this video. Now, if B and A are in the same direction, so B is traveling perpendicular to the plane of the area of the coil, the magnetic flux density is passing straight through the coil, um, parallel to the normal, then we have the maximum flux linkage. But if the coil is arranged so that the flux density is perpendicular to the normal of the coil, so the flux density is in the same direction as the plane of the coil, well, in that case, there's no flux linkage. And if the coil is rotated round through 360 degrees, then it follows this expression here. The angular displacement of the coil to that magnetic flux density is theta. And that is equal to the angular frequency multiplied by the time where when the time is zero, we'll say the angular displacement is zero. The angular frequency is given by this expression here, and in this case, it's a constant. So in this particular example, the expression for EMF can be written like this, where I've substituted that function in here. Remember, phi here, which is the flux linkage as a function of time. Well, this is what that function is. So I've taken outside of the derivative n, b, a, because they're all constants. And so what we're left with is d by dt of the cosine of omega t. Well, omega t is theta. So this is d by dt of cosine of theta. So this is a function of a function of time. So we can use the chain rule. As you can see here, d phi by d theta multiplied by d theta by dt is going to be d phi by dt. It's got those minuses there as well because of Lenz's law. And that's what the EMF is. The expression above looks very, very challenging. If you break it down to those two parts, it looks a lot more straightforward. Remember, omega t is theta. And so this term here becomes this term here. I've written phi in terms of theta. Nothing wrong with that. And this term here is this term here. I've written theta in terms of omega t. Nothing wrong with that. Omega t is theta. Now this is much more straightforward to solve. Here I've taken the constants from those two terms outside of the derivative. So n, b, a I've taken to the left here, and omega I've taken to the left here. And look what I'm left with. d cosine theta by d theta is minus sine theta. 
Well, the whole thing's already minus, so that just becomes positive, NBA sine theta. And dt by dt is just the number 1, so I'm left with omega. And there we have it, just tidying up a little bit, moving the order around and substituting for theta with omega t. I'm left with an expression for the emf as a function of time. If you remember, we started with the emf equaling d phi t by dt, it's some differential equation. But we finish with an equation we can actually use. I can plug in my time and plug in my constants and know what the emf is. And there were two parts to this. The first part was the chain rule, which is useful for functions of functions. And the second part was how to differentiate a cosine function, and that's this one here. We're going to use that differentiation of the cosine function in the second example now, which is the example for simple harmonic motion. Oh, but just before we do, just a reminder that that equation at the bottom is for a coil rotating in a uniform magnetic field. If you have some other sort of electromagnetic paradigm, you'll have to use some other sort of equation. But you can come up with that equation yourself. As long as you know how phi varies with time, you can plug that into this differential equation and find what the EMF is at a particular time by differentiating. And so the second example is deriving this equation here. This equation here is the definition of simple harmonic motion. Now let's start from first principles. If a body is undergoing simple harmonic motion, then its displacement can be described by this equation here. But A is the maximum displacement, the amplitude, and theta here is the phase. And just as we had before for angular displacement, the phase is omega t where omega, the angular frequency, is 2 times pi times the frequency, and frequency is the reciprocal of the time period. And that means the phase can be described as 2 pi, that's one complete rotation, or oscillation, because it's simple harmonic motion, multiplied by the fraction of an oscillation, which is the time since we started oscillating, since the displacement was equal to the amplitude, divided by the time period. So that's a fraction of an oscillation multiplied by we're representing our oscillations in radians, so one full oscillation. In a previous video, I explained that the first derivative of displacement is velocity. And the first derivative of velocity is acceleration. That means that the second derivative of displacement is acceleration. So we are going to differentiate this function twice with respect to t in order to calculate what the acceleration is. Now, as we're going to be differentiating x with respect to t, I've written the equation in a form so that x is a function of t. And you can see, just as before, it's a function of a function of t. Omega t is a function of t, so cosine of omega t is a function of a function of t. It's a functional. And that means we're going to use the chain rule. And actually, we use the chain rule in exactly the same way we did in the previous example, just like this cosine omega t is cosine theta, so d cosine theta by d theta multiplied by d theta over dt, the d thetas would cancel and give me what I want, which is d cosine theta by dt. And as before, I've just taken my a outside of the derivative because it's a constant, I don't need it there. So d cosine theta by d theta becomes minus sine theta, and the theta is omega t, so d omega t by dt just becomes omega, and I've written that there. So here I've just written it again, what v is. v is a function of theta, and v is a function of t. So now we can differentiate that with respect to t to find what the acceleration is. And oh dear, we've got a functional again. Omega t is a function of t, so sine of omega t is a function of a function of t. Not a problem, we can use the chain rule. So I've just written it in this form here, knowing that I'm not going to call it o, uh, theta there. I'm going to call that omega t, like that. And oops, I just noticed a small mistake there, but I just fixed it. So here's my expression. Let's tidy that up. Minus a omega squared cosine theta. But hang on a minute. A cosine theta had a different name. Right at the start, we decided that displacement was varying cosinusoidally like that. And so I've just factored the a cosine theta out to make it even more obvious what we're doing. We're just substituting. And we're left with that expression there, the definition 
of simple harmonic motion written as an equation. We derived it using calculus. Now, bear in mind, what we're doing here is what's called modelling. We are modelling the universe. We are writing an equation that we can use to predict what happens next. In this case, you observe the sinusoidal nature of the oscillation. You write an expression down for the displacement, and then you differentiate it in order to get an expression for the velocity and then do it again to get an expression for the acceleration. But what we're doing is using some basic principles and definitions. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And we're using those ideas and some initial model that we've set up to come up with a new expression that is perhaps more useful. Well, we've looked at differentiating polynomial functions and we've looked at differentiating trigonometric functions. Now we're going to have a look in the next video at differentiating exponential functions.